Hey guys, how you doing? VT Meister here. Hope all is well. Well, today I'm working on the solar. This is part five of the series, and uh, going to be putting up the rails today, and working on some of the connections. So I want to show you uh, what's going on, and I want to show you all the little connections, some of the things you have to think about before you do solar. So let's check this out. So along with all the big parts, you think about panels, the rails, the mounting system. You have to think about all the connections and how you're going to hook things up here. So looking at this right now, you can see I got uh, several junction boxes and covers I have. These are the, uh, the mounts for the uh, junction boxes to go on the rails. These are hard to find. They're end phase. They don't make them anymore. And I want to use the same thing I had before to just to match everything up between both arrays. I got this feet over here and some of the connections here. And talk about grounding, check this out. I got grounding lugs here for all the panels. Then I have the end connectors for the solar panels. Let's take a look at the connection here for the middle of the solar panels. This goes in between and, and mounts uh, on the rail and secures the solar panels next to each other in between. It's a little bit different from the previous generation. There's actually edges on the, on the edge of this. And what happens is when you mount this, it's going to dig into the frames of the solar panel and it's going to provide a, uh, a grounding connection. And what's cool is uh, you don't have to use weave connectors. This is kind of built in, so it's something new. So I'm pretty excited about trying that out. Got my uh, stainless steel lugs. Everything's stainless steel here. Three and a half inch, three eighths. Um, what else? I got some lugs here. Um, I'm going to determine those I'm going to put in the uh, junction boxes because I have number six grounding wire and I have smaller wires I need to make sure everything is properly connected in the junction boxes so there you go and I have the legs for the solar panels they're actually in the garage right now so lots of connections things you have to think about here before you're just going to throw some solar panels up on the ground here all right guys so I just got the call that some of my solar panels have come in from the local distributor that I'm using. I'm going with uh, Green Mountain Electric Supply. They're a pretty big outfit in Vermont and uh, they have several locations and one of them is in Georgia, Vermont, which is only 10 minutes away from me. And uh, I've gone with Solar World 285s, the uh, monocrystalline silver frames. All right guys, so I'm at uh, Green Mountain Electric Supply here in Georgia. I'm going to pick up the panels now. All right, so there we go. Four new Solar World 285 uh, panels. They just brought them in, um, used the forklift, and load them in super light. And I got two uh, micro inverters. I already have two at home. I got two more M phase M250s. And I'm starting off with four panels because when I first start racking, I want to make sure there's stability in the rack. And then uh, I'm going to add panels as I go. All right, guys, so I'm home from Green Mountain Electric Supply, and I picked up my four panels and two microinverters. And, uh, boy, I have some good news to tell you. Um, the panels were substantially lower than what they quoted me. They originally quoted me $260 per panel, and uh, they came in with a lower price, $222.36 per panel. It doesn't matter if you buy one or if you buy 10000 So that's really cool. I'm very excited about that. Also, I mentioned that the microverters are a pretty good deal too. Uh, if you buy one or if you buy ten, uh, they're all the same price. I paid $135. Tax exempt on solar equipment for homeowners and businesses with the right paperwork. Uh, no freight and no minimum amount to buy. So a good deal. Um, if you do the math, uh, $222 per panel is about $0.78 cents a watt. So awesome. Very excited about that. So I'm going to get the panels inside and uh, see what else I can get done today. Good morning, YouTube. Working on the uh, racking and grounding today on the new solar. As you can see behind me, I'm going to pound two eight-foot ground rods into the ground. It's nice and cool this morning. It's a good time to work. So here we go.
All right, guys, I want to show you what I got done today and uh, where the project's at. So both ground rods are in. Did that early this morning. And then later this afternoon, after I took a break, I uh, came back and finished the uh, trench and new conduit run between the two arrays. So I went ahead and did that. That actually took some time because I had to dig it all out, move all the stone, take the soil out, run my uh, conduit, fit it, run the wire, and then fill it back in, um, fill all the stone, put it all back together, and uh, this is where I'm at now. So you can see, still have to put the uh, flexible conduit on. I'll do that once the rack goes up. I want to show you one last thing. Check out this grass, the new grass that's growing. I've mowed it a couple times, trimmed it. It's coming in nice. Pretty good. All right, so I'm back at it here and uh, I'm going to get my uh, feet in today for the uh, legs for the rail and hopefully the rail up. So what I need to do here is snap a chalk line straight down because my lumber is not quite straight. It's kind of warped here and there, but that's all right. As long as I get a nice straight line going completely down both sides, it should be fine. There's a little more forgiveness on the back rail because of how the legs adjust up and down and I can place them anywhere I need to. But, the, but this line right here, this needs to be uh, pretty straight and so this is one of the most critical parts of building the array. I want to make sure I got the right angle, I got it going straight, and I also want to make sure it lines up with the other array and looks right. All right, so I've gone ahead and snapped the chalk line. Actually, the rails are sitting on the chalk line right now. You can see I got it going straight down. Also, for the feet, three of the five feet, I actually wanted to put it on the concrete saw tube, either on or very near it, so the center of the weight is distributed on the base of that sonal tube. So I'm getting ready to drill out the uh, holes for the front of the array here. You can see I got lag bolts here. They're three and a half inch, three eighths. It's all stainless steel. Get the base of the feet on now. There's an identical foot that attaches here. It goes this way, and that's what's going to hold the rail. gone ahead and angled my rails to about 27 degrees here and this is temporary until I get my panels put on the rails and then I'll actually loosen up this row here and then adjust the uh, actual angle to where the panel lays flat so everything sits nice and flush but I need this angle right now on both sets of rails so I can put my panels down try to get them flat and then make individual adjustments all right guys I've run into a little roadblock here I'm short on L feet and uh, the mistake is mine I should have ordered 40 and I only have 20 on hand so I got the front done but I'm out of L feet for the back two beams just ordered 20 more not sure when they're gonna come in if they ship from New Jersey they're gonna come in probably Monday or Tuesday 
if they ship from California, it's going to be the end of next week. So I'm not sure I want to wait that long to continue on the project here. I want to get this done. So I'm thinking about disassembling the feet off this front beam here and putting them back here. And at least I can build out this part of the new solar and get my four panels up. Maybe purchase the fifth panel and be done with this. Once the new feet come in, I can finish this part at a later date. Maybe towards the uh, end of next week, depending on when they come in. So I'm going to disassemble the feet over here and put them over here. I'm going to go ahead and start working on some of the hardware for the solar project. This is one of the legs. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts in and the legs and get this all done. Doing it inside, it's nice and cool and I can save myself from some of the uh, heat. It's really hot outside. Also here are the junction boxes. I'm going to work on putting these together. I have some uh, hardware I want to put inside for making my ground connections as well as putting on some of my uh, uh, connectors for the uh, flexible conduit I have. Alright, so I'm working next on attaching my bracket so I can mount my junction boxes on the solar rail. This is made by Unirac. And I got one done here. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is attach these stainless steel sheet metal screws actually just ratchet them down and uh, before I do that I just draw out a little bit just maybe like a quarter of an inch if that so that uh, I can attach the bracket on to the box here and actually by doing that creating a bond I also need to cut a hole in this three-quarter inch knockout which is sized appropriately for this number six stranded wire. This wire here attaches to the rails and also to the solar panels. It's going to provide a ground. When it's connected through this hole into the junction box, it's going to connect with the uh, ground wire from the M phase trunk cable. Now that M phase trunk cable passes through to the junction box and then heads back to the AC uh, disconnect inside the garage which it's ultimately grounded with the uh, with the house going to attach the legs then attach the rail Looks like I might hit some stormy weather here. Sun is going to this. I don't mind working in the clouds, but I don't want to get caught in the rain or thunder and lightning. All right, this was not on the weather map. <laughs> Rained out. It's a pretty good uh, little clipper uh, system here. The bands, oh, amazing. All right, guys. So I just uh, got out of the rainstorm and uh, finished putting the rack up. So I want to show you some things here that I did. The angle of these legs are at 68 degrees. And I made sure that my angle of my rail here is at 28 degrees and my bottom rail is also at 28 degrees. So the next thing to do is to put a solar panel down and to make sure everything is snug and square. And if things aren't then I can adjust either rail, the pitch of the rail to make sure everything fits up. So I'm glad I got this done. It's actually pretty easy to do once you get uh, get your angle. Just make sure all your legs are at the same angle. Make sure your rails are at the same angle. 
And then you kind of have to do something old fashioned while I go through is just make sure everything is square and straight. It's kind of looking down, looking down two by four. Just making sure everything looks good. So sometimes you have to adjust the height up and down to make sure the rail's not bending and back and forth. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm gonna go ahead, get a solar panel, just put it down to see how I'm lining up for angles. All right, I got one panel up, it's just temporary. And uh, real pleased with it. Things are uh, lining up real nice, 28 degrees. Everything is real flush here. And uh, if it's not, I can just adjust the rack a little bit to make up for not being exactly square. So my next step is to figure out where I want to place my first panel so I have all five going down and they line up really nice and square and center on the array. Once I get those measurements done, then I'm going to go ahead and start doing the end face cable. I have to do the measuring first because I have to know where I want to put my micro inverter on the rack. Then I'll do the grounding and then I can permanently mount solar panels. Alright, check this out. I want to know how long my uh, span will be for all five solar panels when put together. And I want to show you the difference between the old middle mount and the new one. Check this out. Look how much difference there is in space right now. See that? The new panels are going to be really close together. So check this out. The panels are only going to be a quarter inch apart from each other. It's pretty tight. It's going to look really nice. On the existing ray, the panels are about an inch apart. So let's go ahead and do some simple math so we can figure out where we want to place our first panel on the rack. So first of all, the rack is 208 inches long. And each panel is 39.5 inches wide. So I have five panels. So 39.5 times 5 is 197.5. The spacing between the panels adds another inch because it's a quarter inch spacing. So I have 198.5 inches. So I have to take 208 and minus 198.5. Five. That comes out to be nine and a half inches. So if I divide that in half, I need to start at four and three quarters of an inch in. If I start there and I bring over my five panels, I should end at four and three quarters of an inch. So I've gone ahead and marked my four and three quarters of an inch in. I'm going to start on this bottom rail and then place my rail right there. I didn't mark on the top because at this point I think this rail, the bottom rail, is sticking out a little further than the top rail. So I'm going to put it down as long as I'm square on every end. So if I'm out, let's say, if you look at this test rail, right now I know this is nine and a quarter inch. As long as I'm out nine and a quarter inch on that side, those are the same, and my two bottom measurements are the same for wherever they are. I think it's six and a half right now. I know the panel will be square on both rails. Here's my first marking. This is the edge of my first solar panel on the top rail. I'm going to measure over 19.75 inches. It's going to take me to this next mark. This is where my first microinverter is going to be placed. From this point, I'm going to measure 39.5 inches, and I'm going to reach my next spot where I'll place my next microinverter, and this will be in between the next solar panel, and from this point on, every 39.5 inches. So this doesn't have to be exact science here, as long as I get the microinverters fairly close to where I want them underneath each panel, I can also move them, slide them back and forth. I've gone ahead and hung two junction boxes on the top rail using the uh, end phase mounting bracket and I have extra bolts. These are actually T bolts so I'm making a nice uh, grounding right there 
And I also started hanging the end face trunk cable. So this is real simple wiring. It's just four wire or it's three wire with a ground. So my microverter will mount here and then that will plug into the end phase trunk cable and then there will be two MC4 connectors which the panels will plug into. It's pretty simple. This goes down here. Here's my end of the cable right here. Just have it tucked in there for right now. I'm going to run that into the junction box and terminate with some caps. It will be brought under eventually when I build out the second array shortly. And then um, I have a, actually a branch terminator at the end that just goes onto the cable and separates all the wires. So this is why I want to basically know where I'm putting my microinverters because of where I want to place the cables. So everything's looking pretty good as long as it's in the general vicinity. I'm in good shape here. Gone ahead and capped off the wires. This is the junction box at the end of the first array. Just need to wire the other end to the disconnect. And this rail, this rack will be all set to go. Here's the junction box at the beginning of the uh, solar array. And I want to show you the grounding system I'm using. I got this lug here. That's grounding number six wire that's coming out the back. And then I have a pigtail that's going to connect to my ground from the end phase cable plus the ground that's coming from the disconnect in the breaker box which eventually goes back to the house ground and you can see the ground cable coming out the back this is going to mount here with a weep connector then go down connect on this rail and then go across and ground all the solar panels on the bottom so the rails, solar panels, and all the hardware is going to be grounded together. I'll show you how easy it is to rack an Enphase M250 microinverter. We're done. Next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and plug in my end phase. All I have to do is line up the arrows. There's an arrow right here. There's an arrow right here. Just go ahead, plug that in, and we're all set. All right, so I'm getting ready to rack the first panel. And I want to show you guys something here. Make sure I'm flush on the rail. So down here, if I can get it low enough, you can see. I'm actually sitting flush on both part of the rails, on the front and the back. Okay, but let's go up here. Let's take a look at this one. So on this one, I'm only sitting on the back part of the rail. I'm completely missing the front part of the rail. So what that tells me is that I'm not too far off in the pitch. I do need to angle my rail and go up this way just a little bit to, to make sure the solar panel sits on both the front and part back of the rail. Okay, so I just raised up the back rail and everything's sitting flush. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the first panel. Here's the first panel. I just wanna show you, I've gone ahead and marked three and a half inches right here on both sides. And what that is, when I first racked the uh, panel, I wanna make sure I'm going square up the rail. So if I'm equal on both sides, at least I know my my bottom is square, then I can just uh, line up the top. Gone ahead and mounted the first panel. Things went pretty well. Off camera, I actually brought it down a little further. So this one's done. The next ones I do will go even quicker and faster because all I have to do is line up the bottom of the next panel to this previous panel and the top. As long as they're both lined up and they're flush with each other, they'll be in perfect alignment. Just want to point out the correct way to mount the microinverter to the rail 
is to make sure that the fender washer is pushing down the micro inverter. And I think on the first one, I actually did it uh, backwards. I put the fender washer behind the micro inverter, which was a mistake on my part. I'll go back and fix it. I can actually take off the inverter when it's underneath the panel. It's a little tricky, but it can be done. All right, I went ahead and fixed the uh, first micro inverter. The fender washer is now on the top and it's pushing down on the micro inverter. I have some grounding clamps I'm going to attach to the solar panel and then the grounding cable, the number six um, wire that's stranded is going to attach to this grounding clamp. And I'm going to do it now because it's way easier to do it at this height than it is to do it when the panels are racked and I have to climb underneath the panels. My solar feet just arrived via FedEx. Perfect timing. I ordered them Friday night and it's Tuesday today. You good? I'm good. All right, guys, so I got the five panels mounted up and uh, very happy. Check this out. This is where I started, four and three quarters of an inch. All right, let's see where I ended. Four and three quarters of an inch, perfect. All right, have to say these middle mounts, this new type of hardware from uh, Unirac, this so far has been the highlight of the project. These are so much easier to use than the old fashioned middle mounts. Um, they just go in and it's a quarter inch clearance between both panels, super tight. I mean, check it out. Look at the, look at the difference between this and that down there, the spacing on the far array so much better. Just need to go ahead and do my grounding. Ground the rails, ground the solar panels, connect it to the ground rod, plug in the panels, and we are ready to rock and roll here. I know it's a little bit of discoloration here. These are not B panels. These are A panels. That's from uh, the oils in my hand. I put a lot of suntan lotion on today and uh, got onto the panels. So they'll come off easily with the, when I wash the panels. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, grounding and the components I'm using. So I have right here is a weeb lug. You can see the four dots in the back. These press down on the rail and it creates a bond so that the ground cable bonds to the rail. And as you can see here, I have one underneath the solar panel on the end panel. And this ground wire comes out of the box through the uh, weeb lug and down to another one in the corner at the bottom. This is at the beginning of the ray. Once it goes down there, then my ground wire attaches to each solar panel in two locations on each panel. So the ground cable comes off the last solar panel and connects to my eight foot ground rod and it is grounded. I am just about done. For this one section of the ray, I just need to connect my MC4 connectors to the microinverter. This is real easy. So here are my MC4 connector plugs, and I just have to plug them in. There's no way I can get this wrong. Um, you can only go one way on these, it's either male or female. All right, guys, so it's early evening, and we finished up with the solar project here. The first five panels, everything's done, everything's plugged in. One thing I have left to do is to turn on the disconnect. The breaker inside is on. Just need to energize the system here. 
and here we go all right so the panel should be making a little power even though the sun is in the opposite direction now tomorrow will be the test I'm gonna go inside and see if I can get the uh, M-Phase Envoy to recognize the panels. Should be enough power in the uh, line communications to do that. And I'll check back with you tomorrow. Good morning guys, it's the following day. Just checking in, everything is looking good. The uh, panels are working great. The Envoy uh, found all the panels last night when I did a scan off my uh, iPhone using Enlightened software app and uh, very pleased so let's take one more look here at the panels so I'm gonna wrap up this video and this is uh, the end of part five and uh, I probably will do a part six when I build out the other array but it'll just be a uh, look and see why I finished kind of video so the next ray is going to be just exactly the same thing so no sense in documenting that but uh, as always, I want to thank you for uh, coming along with the journey here. I hope you enjoyed this video in building uh, a DIY ground mount solar using Enphase uh, microinverters and uh, solar world solar panels. So it's been fun. Uh, stay tuned for another video, another update video on the project when I finish up uh, the next uh, array. All right, you know what to do. Subscribe, thumbs up. It's always appreciated. Leave a comment, always leave a comment, and we'll catch you next time.